I was very excited when the Elegoo Saturn launched. The original Elegoo Mars had been a total workhorse for me and the idea of having that same experience in just a larger package was something that I had been waiting for. I was not alone in this and the original Saturn has been a success. Towards the end of 2021, Elegoo announced the Saturn S, which was very similar to the original Saturn, but had some quality of life improvements. Then May of this year, the Saturn II was announced. This looked very different than the previous Saturn printers and raised the screen from a nine inch 4K panel to a 10 inch 8K panel, giving you a much smaller pixel size. Elegoo sent me the Saturn II back in June, so I've had a couple of months to play around with it and put it through its paces. In today's video, we will be diving into the Saturn II, going over its specs, what the original unboxing and setup was like, how it has performed for me, and of course, we will take a look at some of the prints off of this machine. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Into The AM for sponsoring today's video. Into The AM is a clothing company made of artists and creators that see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. They offer a wide range of premium graphic tees with unique designs from space to plants and animals, along with their basic line that is much more discreet with a small printed logo. I'm six foot tall with fairly long arms and I am very picky when it comes to the fit of shirts. I love that their shirts are pre-shrunk soft and they fit really well. They're currently running a bundle deal for their graphic tees at three for $60 and their basic t-shirt line at three for $49.95. Using the coupon code ModBot will give you an additional 10% off. Click the link below to find out more and get 10% off of these awesome shirts. Starting off with the specs, the Elegoo Saturn II is an MSLA 3D printer with a 10 inch monochrome LCD screen. This gives the printer an XY resolution of 28.5 microns, which is a pretty large jump from the 50 micron resolution of the original Saturn. The Saturn II has a build volume of 219 by 123 by 250 millimeters, which is quite a bit larger than the 192 by 120 by 200 of the original Saturn. The majority of the difference is in Z height, so depending on what you print and the types of things you print, you might find this additional space useful or you might not use it very often. The build plate rides up and down on two large linear rails and a single lead screw. The build plate is sandblasted aluminum, which is what Elegoo has been using on their past couple generations of resin 3D printers, which has worked quite well and provides great adhesion. They use the same sort of ball joint setup on the build plate to get it aligned with the LCD screen. It's the same thing that they've used since the original Mars. I've never had any issues with it and it works really well. The vat is aluminum and ships with their PFA or FEP 2.0 film that is supposed to provide less friction during the peeling of each layer when printing. There's also a max fill line, which will help Hopefully help to prevent any accidents. There is a carbon filter with removable media towards the top back of the machine that is much larger than any I've seen on other resin printers. I am a big fan of this and it does really help to pull out some of the odors produced by the resins. If you decide you want to take it a step further, there's actually a cutout that can be removed from the back of the top cover that will allow you to mount an exhaust hose if you actually want to exhaust this into some sort of bigger filtration system or just out of your house or out of your workshop. This is something I haven't seen before and although I don't personally use it for my setup, I now have all the resin printers in the garage, this is a really cool option and something that I'm happy to see. Look-wise, they went away with the flat rectangle design and gave it a much more futuristic look from the front by changing the shape of the acrylic and the bottom base. I had honestly grown used to their sort of simple rectangle look, but a little bit of a facelift is not a bad thing, and I do think that the new design looks pretty cool. On the front of the machine is a three and a half inch touchscreen that you'll use to interact with the machine and start prints along with a power button. All of their previous generation printers used a rocker switch, while this one uses a hard physical push button on the front. It is flush with the machine and requires a pretty hard push, so hopefully that will prevent accidentally cutting off the power to your printer while a print is running. There are vents on both sides of the base on the machine, a USB port on the right side, and the back just has the power input jack. The Saturn II feels pretty tanky and weighs just over 24 pounds. The printer came packaged very well and the entire unboxing setup to first print was live streamed over on the Modbot Army channel. If that's something you're interested in checking out, I will have the links to that video in the description down below. The setup was really the same as any other resin 3D printer I've used and you should be up and running very quickly. The flash drive included with the printer had Chitu box on it with a profile for the Saturn II. I used this at the beginning, but the Saturn II is now in Lychee Slicer and that is what I am currently 
currently using. On stream, we started off using Elegoo Green Resin that I picked up from Amazon to print a bust of Vecna from Stranger Things. Links to all the models shown here will be in the description of the video if you want to take a look at them for yourself or print them out. The Vecna bust turned out great and I was really excited to do some more printing. Well, right after that initial print, I began to run into issues. Anything small that had like delicate details was getting pulled and either torn or stretched and even large prints were having sort of ripples in the prints. I've used quite a few resin 3D printers over the years and I'm fairly confident with my ability to set the gap for the build plate and the LCD screen or align the build plate with the resin printer. So that combined with the new FEP 2.0 that's supposed to have less friction had me scratching my head. I played around with the slicer settings for a little bit longer, running some additional prints and still had issues. So ultimately I drained the vat, I went ahead and realigned or re-leveled the build plate with the LCD screen and the issues persisted. At that point, I drained everything again, got busy with a couple other projects and put this off to the side for a couple of weeks. Then some angel reached out to me and I cannot remember who it was or what source they reached out to me from. I did searching, trying to find who they are or who they were and had no luck. So thank you to whoever you are. But someone told me that on the Elegoo Facebook group, the Elegoo had mentioned that others were having issues with the leveling card they provided and that they were recommending just using a sheet of standard printer paper. So I undid the screws one more time and re-leveled it, this time just using a standard piece of printer paper, which in all honesty is what I typically use. And from that point forward, all of the issues I was having went away. At that point onward, I was able to get consistent prints off of this machine that were looking gorgeous. I printed a Bart Simpson model completely solid from Chaos Cortec in Nova 3D navy gray resin, which I am really hoping I get a chance to paint. I also printed out a few minis from One Page Rules on my mini factory that was recommended to me by my buddy Zerent, and the detail is just absolutely insane. I did my best to get angles with the camera that would allow you to see it, but because of how small they are, like you just really cannot see the insane amount of detail in these prints. I needed quite a bit of resin for some resin printer testing that I'm doing, and I saw that J.O. had standard uh, MSLA or LCD resin on Amazon for $20 a bottle, so instead of just sampling out a little bit, I picked up five different bottles of it. Using their blue resin, I printed the Ice Dragon and the King of the Dead from Photos Mint. These models are absolutely insane, and I was blown away with how well this inexpensive resin printed on the Saturn II. The Ice Dragon looks like it was meant to be printed in this resin, and I'm very tempted to install an LED into the King of the Dead model. I had a fair amount of that blue resin still left in the vat, and so I decided I wanted to print out some sort of sea creature thing, and I began my hunt. This is when I found the Squid Attack model. This is an absolutely epic model of a monster squid engulfing what looks like a steampunk style submarine. The print turned out perfect, and it is just such a wicked cool model. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite resin brand is and your favorite resin color. I'm, since I'm doing quite a bit of resin printing, just trying to see what everyone else is printing with to maybe get some ideas of some other resins I want to pick up as well. My initial experience with the Saturn II was pretty dang frustrating, and I am really surprised that Elegoo didn't reach out with some sort of a courtesy email to anybody that had either received or purchased one of these machines early on once the information about the provided leveling card was discovered. I personally am not on Facebook very often, and although I do occasionally check out some of the groups, had this person not reached out to me, I probably wouldn't have used a regular piece of paper until I ended up losing that included leveling card. If you're after the highest resolution resin 3D printer, then the Saturn II is a great option and the XY resolution is substantially finer than the previous generation of Saturn machines. However, the original Saturn and Saturn S still look damn good and for many people are absolutely viable options. Uncle Jesse does a video where he compares the same prints ran on each of the Saturn machines that is really interesting and I will have them linked in the description. The quality is getting so good that in a lot of instances, unless you have them under some sort of magnification, you really can't see a ton of the differences with the naked eye. At recording, the Saturn II is $550, the Saturn S is $399, and the original Saturn is $329. The Saturn II is a high quality machine, but so is the original Saturn. At roughly $220 more, only you can decide for yourself whether the Saturn II is worth the difference to get the higher resolution XY, as well as the additional 50 millimeters in build volume, or if it makes sense to take that money, 
put it towards a full wash and cure station and have a little bit left over for a bottle or two of resin. I don't feel like there is a right or wrong answer to that. And just like with FDM or extrusion based 3D printing, it is not a one shoe fits all. And what you need will vary greatly depending on your specific application. And that has been the Elegoo Saturn 2. Hopefully I was able to answer the majority of your questions if you're on the fence about this printer or if it's something you're interested in, or again, if you're uh, deciding between which of the Saturns, maybe I made it just a little bit more confusing for you to decide which one that you want. But if you have any questions I didn't answer, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions. And if I don't know, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer directly to try to get your questions answered. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to each of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!